And joining me right now in uh, Buckingham Palace, or out the front of Buckingham Palace, I'm not going to promote myself right now, is none other than Sarah Euston, who's the Royal Editor for Talk TV. And also we have uh, Caroline Aston, who is a Royal Author. Lovely to see you both. Um, Sarah, again, what's happening right now in uh, Northern Ireland? You literally have three things happening in three parts right now. Wales will have its moment a little bit later, but what are your thoughts today? You can see, Paul, can't you, why this program, this Operation London Bridge, has been years and years in the planning, given all of the moving parts. So right now what is happening is the King and the Queen Consort are on their way from Belfast to Hillsborough Castle. When they're there, they're going to be greeted by a welcoming party, and then we expect there to be a short walkabout with people who have gathered there. Now, the difference in Northern Ireland to what we've seen in Edinburgh and what we saw here outside uh, Buckingham Palace is the security. So anyone who wanted to be outside Hillsborough Castle had to go to a different venue where they were security screened and then they've been bussed to Hillsborough Castle in order to be there for that walkabout. There'll be a firing of a gun salute, 21 rounds, as the King and Queen Consort arrive at the state entrance. And then they're going to go inside and they're going to view an exhibition of pictures, and they are pictures of Her Majesty throughout her reign. Then there'll be an audience with the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, Chris Heaton Hughes, brand new in the job like so many that we are seeing over the course of the... In, no, and, and the, you, you know, it, it, we were talking about security in London. We have a brand new Metropolitan Police Commissioner. We have new Secretary of State for Northern Ireland. We have a new Prime Minister. We have a new monarch all at the same time. There'll be a, a, an audience and then uh, the King will meet the leaders of the five main political parties in Northern Ireland, very aware of the political sensitivities in Northern Ireland. It's his 39th visit, but of course his first as King. Caroline, uh, Lord Mountbatten and his death in 1979, it shaped Charles as a person. Um, do you think that it hardened his heart for a while and how he will react as King Charles today shows us his evolution? Well, certainly it will have broken his heart for a while because, of course, Earl Mountbatten of Burma, he almost saw as a second father. And, of course, I believe it was uh, Princess Diana meeting him and expressing her sorrow at his sorrow that first of all bonded them when she was a very young girl. As for his future, he knows he's apolitical, he's a constitutional monarch now, and rather like his mother will follow very much in her pattern. Who knows where the future will take us, but for the moment, like all of us, I think we're waiting for a reign, a great reign from King Charles III, but at the moment, you're looking at people in this country, all of whom want not just to observe, but to participate in this great moment of history. And for me, very moving. And on Monday, well, as he put it, flights of angels will sing his mother to her rest.